Many of you may be familiar with linked lists. They're commonly used to hold lists of items, in the same vein as arrays. But how do you know which one to use and why? I don't mean just some guidelines on when to use one or the other, but understanding fundamentally the connection between these data structures and the underlying memory. What are linked lists? In the most simple terms, they're a way of storing several items at once. Typically in code, you'll have a situation like this where you want to store a bunch of junk. Let's pretend we have a linked list class, so const name equals new linked list, and names.add, fry, names.add, zoidberg, names.add, etc., etc., where names is a linked list, and I've added four names to the linked list. And now I'm able to traverse it, search for items, that sort of thing, instead of having four separate variables. In other words, avoiding this situation where you have const name one equals fry, const name two equals zoidberg, etc., etc. These just seem like arrays with more steps. A little bit, yeah, I mean, they're both collections of items, but let's talk more about the underlying memory. If you think about memory as this gigantic series of slots, each of which holds one byte, and this is all ordered sequentially, there's a few ways of kind of rationing out memory that emerge pretty naturally. Imagine your family is out to eat at a fancy restaurant. So your party arrives, and you ask the maitre d' for a table for four. There's room, so you all get seated at a nice table far away from the bathroom. A little bit later on, your friend Bob and his family drops by, so you need some extra seats. There's a few natural options. If the table you're at had some extra room already, by chance, then just sit down. No problem. If the table had no extra room, then what can happen is that the maitre d' can find a bigger table that can accommodate you all, and then seat you all there together. And finally, in this example, they can seat Bob and his family at a new table instead, and just let you know where they are, so you can say hi or whatever. Memory isn't that much different. You've got your layout of memory here, and I've already allocated some memory to store some items. But if I want to store another number, then there's a few common ways I can do this. If there's some more room in the piece of memory that I've been assigned, I can write to the end. But if there's no more room, I could ask for a bigger piece, copy everything there, and then write my new thing in. And finally, I could allocate a new piece of memory, and then in the new piece, I can store the new data and an address to the first chunk of data. And this, this, is what linked lists are. Let's draw some more pictures. In more concrete terms, you've got these fragments of memory. Let's call each of these a node, and a node is structured so that it has two sections. The first section will hold the data you want to store, and the second section, which I'll call next, will hold the address and memory of the next node in the chain. So let's say I'm storing numbers. That means I can allocate a node, which gives me a chunk of memory. I can write a number into the data part and leave the next part empty. And then, when I want to store a second number, I allocate another node. So let's say I got this little block of memory now, and I write the number into it. And then in the second part, the next part, I write the address of the first block, forming a chain with this new node as the head. And it should follow that I can keep doing this, keep allocating new nodes, keep writing more values in there, and the chain just keeps growing organically. So are these better than arrays, or worse, or what? To understand that, we need to understand how to do basic operations with them. The first thing we'll talk about is traversing the list, just visiting all of the elements one by one. Arrays are obviously pretty simple, loop over one at a time, incrementing an index. But linked lists are a little different because of their layout and the fact that they're not guaranteed to be contiguous in memory. You start at the head node and move to the next item in the chain. You look at the next pointer, i.e. the address of the next node, and you continue following these pointers over and over until you reach the one that points nowhere. The code will look something like this. So beginning at the head node, we'll have a loop where we assign cur node equals cur node dot next, and then we terminate the loop if cur node is null, meaning we've gone off the end. And as you can see, here's the C++ version, here's the Python version. They're all basically the same thing, a simple loop with some checks. It stands to reason then that searching in a linked list is basically traversing the list, checking each item in sequence until you find what you want. But here's where things get a little interesting. Let's delete an item from the list. Let's say I want to delete this item in the middle here. What you do is you perform a little surgery, taking the previous item in the chain and point the next address to the node after the one that you've deleted. That's it. It's effectively out of the list now. Adding a new node anywhere in the list is the same deal, but backwards. 
To add one, you allocate a new node, change the previous node's next pointer to point to your new node, and then change your new node's next to the next node in the chain. The description might be a little confusing, but the picture should be pretty simple. Now let's compare them to arrays. I really hope you're up to speed on cache locality, otherwise make sure to watch the first video in the series before we move on. We can compare arrays and linked lists along two dimensions. There's performance, and there's memory usage. Let's walk through some common operations now. Traversing a list. Although in both cases you're just going over the elements one by one, in the case of the linked list, each node could be literally anywhere in memory. And if it could be anywhere in memory, that means that the prefetcher might not be able to cache it for you ahead of time, so there's a potential for a cache miss every single element. So although you're technically taking as many steps, i.e. you're looking at the same number of items, an array is just easier for the CPU to process. Random access. This is like, give me the fourth element of the array. Super easy with arrays, because you just calculate the address as the base plus the index, and you get that memory. But with linked lists, this isn't easy at all. You have to traverse the list starting at the first node. So this really sucks. Insertion and deletion. Here's where things get a little interesting. So with insertion into arrays, unless you're putting something right at the end, and you happen to have some free space, then you're going to have to move around the contents of the array. Deleting is pretty much the same deal. A lot of copying and moving elements around if you're trying to preserve the order of the array. With linked lists, if you have a quick way to get to the position you want to insert or delete at, the insertion or deletion itself is trivial. It costs almost nothing. But the trick is, you need to have a fast way of getting to that node. So this one, under the right circumstances, is way, way faster than an array. But it has to be under the right circumstances. And it should follow that inserting right at the beginning of a linked list is super easy. But kinda sucks for an array. So a win for linked lists here. Memory-wise, there's some neat things to explore here too. Unless you allocate more space than you need, arrays pretty much exactly represent the data without any extra overhead. With linked lists, each of those nodes means that you have to store the address of the next node, and so linked lists tend to use a little bit more memory. But an interesting thing to note is that, let's say that you've got a small, fixed amount of memory, and you've already done a bunch of allocation in there. So I'll just cross off a bunch of sections as being used already. Now, if you were to try to allocate an array of a few items, you pretty much can't in this situation. But a linked list is really flexible. Each node can be allocated in the space between the used sections. So although technically it uses more memory, there's a flexibility there that the array just doesn't have. Why would I ever choose this over an array? The canned response is to say, you evaluate your needs, and if you need to say do lots of insertions and deletions, go for a linked list, but that's pretty vague. I'll buck the trend a bit and say that not that that advice is wrong, but I'll add that I've actually had very few instances in my career where I've needed a raw linked list. In just about every case, I've started with dynamic arrays and switched over to a linked list as an optimization. In my spatial hash grids video, I originally implemented a lot of this as maps, but switched to arrays of linked lists as a way to massively speed things up. In actual production code, I've done similar things, used linked lists as swap-in replacements in extremely specific circumstances. And I've also used them when trying to write my own memory allocator for fun. When I was at Google, I did a whole bunch of interviews, and one of my favorite questions to give early on, before it was banned, involved writing a hybrid data structure where the best answer was using a linked list in conjunction with something else. So I won't say that they're super common, but they're an amazing thing to have up your sleeve when the time is right. If you've watched up until this point, it must have been useful, so consider buying me a coffee or something on Patreon. Otherwise, like and subscribe as always really helps me out. Until next time, cheers.